Hello everyone, this is a new series I'm starting. Uh, it's called Record Reconstructor, and it's the idea is I get someone who used to play a lot or still does play a lot uh, to talk about a deck from older eras of Netrunner, why they enjoyed it, and what was fun about it. In uh, this episode, I'm going to be talking with Royal Appliance about food coats. I have a couple of people I've reached out to for doing some more episodes of this, but if you have any ideas or suggestions of people you'd like to see or decks you'd like to see covered, please don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. And without further ado, on to the show. All right, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, yes, I'm uh, Patrick, a.k.a. Rotom Appliance. Um, so I've been playing for God knows ages, since the middle of 2014. So you started playing in 2014. Did you start playing like competitively, like high-level decks right off the bat? Um, oh, no, definitely not. Um, I played... I played just online until the middle of 2017, so that's like three years of just not even buying the cards. Was and... that mostly on Octagon in 2015 to 17? I'm trying yeah. to remember. Yeah. yeah, Octagon, lots and lots of Octagon, just grinding games. Um, people like Pencil were around then, I played loads of games against him. Um, I didn't realize Pencil of... was, a, was an Octagon yeah. warrior. <laughs> yeah, we played tons of, tons of games on there. Octagon. I'm trying to think of anyone else who was around. There were definitely some people who are still here today who I just have memories of grinding loads of games against on Octagon. Um, but yeah, I guess I started competitively. Well, I started in real life uh, June 2017 when I played in Euros, which was my first tournament. And I guess before that, I'd played in some stim hack leagues and things mm. like that online. But I can't exactly remember when that started happening um but i played loads of yeah i played a lot of bad decks first before moving on to good <laughs> I th- ones i think we all have i guess one of my favorite questions is always like oh what was your what was your favorite like bad deck you played before you started <laughs> getting into the good decks <laughs> so i played um i played 10 in fast advance quite a lot on the corpse side um so and this was in i think this was in a period where corpse were quite a way ahead so you could sort of do anything you wanted as the corp and you'd probably do pretty okay so i was playing this for a while really not a very good deck um and then but then this was when fast robiotics existed so at some point i just thought you know let's try this deck because everyone's raving about it and i tried it and just the difference was it was staggering it was like it's so much faster so much more consistent you have astro which is a broken card so that uh, that was pretty much when i never looked back i went from 10 into astrobiotics and that was that <laughs> <laughs> but the, the the real good stuff uh give me some more of those fast advances yeah. please um so i guess you know when you look back at your network career so far what do you have accomplishments you're particularly proud of? Things you, you know, a little bit of chance to brag about how you're, you know, things yeah. that you... Well, I guess I'm happiest with winning Euros in 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that, that's kind of the main standout one, I guess. Um, I've placed highly in a few worlds as well, which is always nice. But uh, that was the one that left me feeling the happiest, I suppose. You're definitely one of those players that I think always comes up on the list of like, oh, if they're here, they're going to do well. So um, I think you're you're selling yourself a little short with just that one, but I'll, we can move on. Uh, it's always <laughs> weird to talk about yourself and hype up yourself. You so said most think proud that of. Question. Yeah. That's true. I did say most yeah. proud of. So I, mean, yeah, I, I guess... guess I played in a I guess I played in a, a rollback tournament, which actually featured this deck that we're going to talk about today. That was in what was it 2020? It was sometime during the pandemic. So there was a there was a, a tournament played in this meta, which I was which I won, so I was quite happy with. But that that is, I guess, my my recent experience <laughs> of playing this list, if you like. Cool. So yeah, what so what deck is this? It's been up on the screen the whole time, but uh, I figure oh, I'm calling it food coats. I don't know if that's actually if this is the right era for food coats, but yeah, food coats. Yeah, I guess I should actually watch the stream, shouldn't I? But yeah, so <laughs> food coats is very much yeah is very much sort of the agreed name for it, I guess. Um, it, it's one of those archetypes that. I mean, it's been around forever. You know, ETF was sort of the standout best HB identity um, pretty much the whole time. And people have always attempted to make scoring decks out of it. But I think Global Food Initiative coming along is what 
really prompted people to revisit this archetype and realize that it's actually really good when you can force the runner to steal four agendas to win every game rather than I don't know what exactly they were playing before, but it will have been a real three pointer. So whether it was priority requisition or I yeah, don't know what I else existed. Maybe I remember Hades it. shards, maybe the shards were around then. Not sure. Yeah, I think but, one of the shards, it was usually one of the shards, I think, was going in from what mm, I remember. I was trying, I was yeah, like, oh, they could be had, on three NAPDs, but that's still not quite enough. You need an extra yeah, point. You had in to there. play real, you had to play real three pointers, unless you are willing to play 10 agendas, I suppose, which most people are not. Um, so I think before this, people gravitated towards Jinteki for their Glacier decks because you had a better agenda suite. You had the Future Perfect, which was not nearly as much of a liability out of centrals. So nobody really, HB always seemed second best to that. But with Food Initiative coming out, I think this is what really caused this archetype to be revisited. People started, you know, building decks and polishing them up and yeah, it just got really popular at that point yeah uh, one thing that's interesting to me is you have six three twos and only a single biotic labor so it's really this is much more about the remote and biotic labor seems like it's more there for clutch situations rather than like yeah a central point absolutely do, there was for a while there was San San city grid engineering the future like decks yeah yeah it's definitely a scoring out of a remote deck to be honest the biotic is probably a well, if you could consider it spicy, I don't think Biotic was even in like most of these lists at all. You could consider it a, what do you call it, a tech slot or a spicy slot, and it is very much as a closer most of the time. Um, but yeah, it's it's not really a fast advance deck. It's a, it's a, a Glacier or a never advanced deck. You have six three twos, like you say, and you just keep shoving things into the remote and forcing the runner to make difficult decisions. Um, but San San was still a good card around about now, but uh, with Breaker Bay Grid being a location, you can't uh, can't really have both in the same deck. So I guess you were not playing super competitively, but you did play in that throwback tournament. What was the sort of runner spread this deck was, was up against? Um, I think at the time there was a fair bit of noise, which was probably one of the harder matchups for this. Um, there was a lot of prepaid Kate, which I'd consider an absolutely classic matchup for this deck. Um, and I can't remember how popular Criminal really was. Um, I mean, I guess there must be some Andy and some Leela, but I don't remember it as much from that world. It feels like that the world's event at the time, which I, I obviously wasn't there, but I did sort of keep a bit of an eye on it. And I think there was quite a bit of Wizard, quite a bit of noise and a lot of Kate going around as far as i remember yeah i, I think, think looking back at worlds this was like the things. this was dan's dlr worlds win um in ah uh, yeah and then yeah, it was like that was popular yeah and then there was like a there was a reg whiz a, a prepaid kate and like a waltz leela or whatever um an archetype i think there. yeah the, the waltz leela was hoyland's uh lists and i Dave was sort of a big criminal player, but I don't know how much crim there was in the cut, actually. If I remembered Kenny's podcast a bit better, I could I could tell you how many <laughs> yeah, crims I'll, there I'll were. I'll actually but... pull it up on, on this on on my screen so that we're yeah. I know this is all this is like real flashbacks to um to like, oh I should have paid more attention to Kenny's podcast. Maybe I'll just do a re listen instead of doing this this video series. But Oh, uh, here it is. Yeah. Yeah, here, here it, it is. is. So it's yeah, not not much crim at all. Not much no, crim just at all. Dave. Yeah, just lots and lots of Kate. Not yeah, a little bit of noise, and then a lot. Of this this food coats deck. Um, and I oh, for wow. the yeah, for those crazy. for those people who are new, it's called food coats because at some point someone made a deck called red coats because all of the ice was taxing, and so and then it's like an American pun basically on the British army who are red coats and the Americans revolted Ooh. because of taxes. And then when this deck got global food initiative, it became food coats because net runners are really yeah. good at coming up with names for decks. So. <laughs> well, you see coats all over the place, don't you? For, for all sorts of different decks, people just yeah, insert I, like one card that's in the deck and call it X coats, whatever it is. Yeah. I think now like a taxing glacier deck is just sort of a coats deck is sort of my impression yeah. at the moment 
And then you'll also have yeah. shop decks, which if they're corpse side mean one thing, and if they're runner side mean an entirely different thing. Um, I think for the corp, a shop is usually a kill deck. And, yes. Uh, for a runner, it's just someone being a bit silly about their name, I think. Yeah. it's. I mean, I think historically it was first, what, personal workshop, and then it became... Ah, uh, right, okay. And then it became... And then pawn shop sort of took over because... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because I think originally it was really. some kind of noise personal workshop list. was like the first mm -hmm. shop. Um, mm -hmm. But then Haley made pawn shop better and also had shop on the name. And so it just like picked up that lineage, I think. that's I might be wrong about that. Um, I'll have to let the, the real meta deck... The real oldies. Is. Uh, who may be watching or listening can correct us when we get things wrong. But yeah, I figure it, yeah, if I get the, stuff wrong, people will be compelled to comment, and that will drive up my YouTube engagement. Um, I see. <laughs> well, we'll do our best. <laughs> uh, noise, noise personal workshop was before my time. But, um, so I have the yeah. game up. Cable Carnage uh, yeah. has been very kind enough to play a, a deck that this was up against, and uh, I'll pull up that list now. It's Noah McKee's The Book of Kate. Uh, just a very standard ah, prepaid Kate. Kate list. So um, it's you know three, pre three prepaid voice pads and then 21 events, almost all of which cost money, uh, including one levy to recycle the, the whole deck and go all over again. Um, notable Ooh. cards, it's got Mimic with no like data suck or nothing. The only, you know, it can break three strength and below sentries, it can break five strengths and above sentries, but no four strength sentries, which is kind of interesting. Though I guess Otman comes Except in, and that's Atman, exactly what it's yeah, for. Yeah, Otman is, is the way of breaking Ichi, which was yeah. popular at the time. Yeah. Yeah, if you're doing more of these, it'd be well worth getting somebody who knows about prepaid cake, because that was quite an interesting, that went through quite a lot of evolution. Yeah, I definitely, um, that's definitely one of the things I want to go and get. I'm, I don't know, yeah. I'm still trying to, nail spags down for a deck so that because i know he was a big but he's he's also done a ton of decks so i don't know but i'll find someone to do a prepaid sure. i took a mulligan there because it was a food and nothing um but i guess i should have yeah well it didn't it seem first. a very good no it didn't seem a great hand it was sort of not a game losing hand but pretty mediocre yeah uh, so this is a bit better yeah it's still not great but it's yeah. okay and we have jackson howard which uh we are honored to have a jackson howard in our opening hand yeah um so what do we want to yeah do? so we i could... guess my initial plan would be like maybe install jackson howard click him and then but i don't actually Myself, love that maybe. i kind of like maybe just like oh just put architect in r&d put enigma on hq then... and take a credit kind of thing i I think we can ice a remote rather than HQ. I don't okay. think there's a lot of HQ threat coming out of this shaper. Oh, yeah, um, I guess that's true. I'm just very used to HQ being, really like, has. a critical thing to protect. Yeah. But, yeah, so I guess we could just do, like, Architect and then, like, do you prefer the Enigma? I'm assuming the Architect should go on the Central. Um, yeah, the Architect goes on R&D, typically, yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess we can go Enigma on the remote just because we have more of those to go around. And then I guess we're going to want to... Uh, yeah. And then take a credit, probably. Um, yeah, you want two ice types on the remote. Yeah. Yeah. So then we can just do, like... We could use the Jackson uh, next turn and mm -hmm. try and find a campaign or something. As I remember, I think uh, being able to stick an early campaign is a big part of this, uh, much like trying to stick a Rashida today. I was going to say, should we put the Jackson in the new remote? But now I'm really tempted to just put it in the same remote. Um, yeah, I suppose I, the issue is we'll have to trash it. Yeah, and I think uh, we're drawing we for a campaign. Good. So I think it's just better to give we are. the one draw over. I think we'll give him the one draw, and hopefully that's the only one he gets. Yeah. Play a game. Uh, so no campaign, but we could just play the hedge fund, do you think? Yeah, I'm trying to decide between playing the hedge fund and drawing a second time. Um... Um, I think the problem with drawing is we like all our cards, and we might draw something else. Something else. We that might we draw also other like. stuff that we like as well. Yeah, if we were flooded, yeah. we would certainly be drawing again. But I think now we just play the hedge fund and 
uh, next turn if the Jackson isn't killed, we continue power drawing for some good stuff. Yeah, and I guess if they kill a Jackson, we might just let them. It's not worth getting the yeah. hedge fund back. Yeah, we, and we ask three Kate credits to pay is a, three. Yeah. Three credits is a is a might bigger than two for Spin Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it doesn't look like uh, Dan wants to run it here. No, I think pretty reasonably. He's looking to yeah. looking to get some prepaid, well, I'm assuming, of, and just missing lots on of most draws, things. Yeah. Wow. Has he just drawn a load of garbage, maybe? maybe. Like tech cards that are no use, like yeah. last Greek clocked, maybe. Yeah, we've Could seen one plastic. I imagine it was on two because everyone was on two plastics back then for the Wayland that didn't make up anything. I think so. Of, but uh, no, there was lots of yellow kill decks, so. Sackcon, the maker's eye legwork. We're happy to see loads of multi access go in the bin. Yeah. Yeah, let's try and find something with Jackson. All just right. want... Okay. Yeah, so then there's our like campaign. Adonis and put a second ice on server one, probably. I would, yeah. So our first ice is Enigma, so I guess we can go with another ice type. We can go with the Wall of Static. Um, and then we have to ditch. Probably something. the Biotic. What do you think? Hmm. Well, I guess. It's I mean, we kind don't need the biotic now. We we might yeah. get remote locked later, and we might be happy to have it. So maybe the enigma. Maybe then? the Jackson. Oh, okay, the Jackson. I guess that makes sense. We have a Jackson. Um, yeah. yeah. Hard to tell, isn't it? Maybe it's completely wrong. Maybe people are, are yelling at the screen saying <laughs> Jackson is the Lord and Savior. You never discard. But um, yeah. Uh, Dan's just messaging me saying his draw is terrible, uh, which I you know <laughs> makes sense. Uh, Fair enough. Two tech writers is not terrible. I mean, if if he gets to play a long game, which it looks yeah. like is going to happen, yeah, going to be a lot of incremental value. Yeah, for um, sure. And this deck, this deck does not win that quick. It's not. It's no precision design. <laughs> yeah, it turns out not making money on your agenda slows you down a lot. It does, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, Ooh, all right. So let's think what Assassin's... I guess I guess he has David, so Assassin is not as good as Ichi. No. I guess the question is where do we want more ice? Do we want a third ice type on the remote, or do we want to reinforce R&D a little bit? I'm kind of leaning towards reinforcing R&D with, like, the Enigma, Enigma and installing yeah. the Ash in the server one, maybe. Could but do that. Yeah, we could do that. Just Don't mind that. Keep building up. Yeah, both of those things and take a credit for the other. Yeah. Man, we've clicked for credits twice. That's like more than I have ever in a modern. Oh, game. in these days you do click for credits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. And, like, I, I'm trying to click for credits more because I think I draw too often when I should be clicking for credits. Um. Mm. Here we don't mind being a bit passive with our turns while the campaign drips. Like we can sort of play like, you know, yeah. install and then just take credits kind of thing. Yeah, like just like, um, I almost want to just like put an ice on each queue just because we do know there is a like work in the list, but like just in install bin. take two kind of thing. We want the third ice type on the remote, like just the architect or something. Is that any good? So we have a, a code gate. We have a barrier. We could yeah. put either the architect or the assassin or the Turing. <laughs> so many options. So many exciting options. Um, so many exciting options. I mean, there's no David in there just yet, so maybe we put the assassin down. Yeah. Um, could put the assassin down. Um, if we wanted, we could play the Eve naked. It does give him a draw, but we could mm -hmm. say to him, do you want to come and trash an Eve at this point? Yeah, probably not with this board state. Probably not. So maybe we could get by with it naked for a while and then put this on the remote and just chill. Yeah. yeah. And then we're looking to draw an agenda about the time that this Adonis finishes. Yeah. There's more eco. He's got a very solid economic base uh, yeah. set up now. Yeah, we do have to, we do have to at some point make start making forward progress yeah. because definitely, yeah. Remote lock was uh, 
Well, this deck has efficient breakers. Once it gets going, it uh, can be quite hard to tax it later. Yeah, the, this this prepaid Kate list has a lot of cards I miss as someone who played far too much Shaper in this era. Uh, yeah, but I, I also was, was saying like, earlier, oh, wasn't cool that you would to... enjoy this deck? Yeah, you would enjoy I, this. Um, I definitely, at the same time, didn't play this. I didn't play prepaid Kate because I, I think I was trying to be hipster or something. Um, Ooh, this is interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely could, could see push it and the Adonis here. Yeah, and if Jackson stays in play, we could actually fire it safely, which is a fun yeah. option. I think, I, I don't know if you agree, I would probably overwrite the Adonis and try and push this well. Yeah, I mean, is it no just breakers. install, take two as the way to push, or is I it think, install and like, put down a piece so. of ice? I think install is all right and then take two i don't think we need another piece of ice anywhere just yet. yeah we can't We've, really afford there's only one two on breakers really being threatened here um yeah, and all of our be surprised ice, if he could get in all of our ice is different strength which makes uh, not quite as good yeah i don't think he's even part. considering it no probably not as a okay this deck play stim mac uh i don't think we figured out it doesn't look like it i don't think we I don't think people uh, okay. were valuing it. I mean, it's hard, um, but... Uh, I think it's just David costing so much influence. Yeah. So we'll score this and fire it and see if we can pull off uh, an epic uh, beta test. Uh, well, we, we get, get an Enigma, enigma. Uh, on our d so, <laughs> I'm just trying to think where we want that. I suppose both of the servers have an Enigma already, so it's not anything that new, but we save install costs, which is nice. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I guess. would put it on the remote just for okay. saving in store costs, but I don't think it actually makes too much difference because both of them have that ice already. Yeah. So we lost a beta test and a CVS. Yeah. yeah. We'll probably just shuffle yeah. maybe even all of those back. I guess CVS isn't that uh, important, but it could CVS be. CVS nice is for not a... a thing. Oh, was that mostly just for noise or something? I think it, yeah, it was more for different matchups where they were playing uh, parasites and stuff like that. Okay. I think get the Adonis. Yeah, I think the Adonis is better than the hedge fund here. Um, yeah. Oh, is the Eve campaign? Oh, I was nice. about to say like go. No, he's... that's it. Just sees a hedge fund. Yeah. Okay, Gordian's down. Well, that's right. So that's that. So that's one of our ice types, kind of not very good. So, hmm. We, I'm trying to think if we draw first and then we put the breaker bay, mm -hmm. maybe an agenda if we draw it. Okay. What's our remote again? Wall of Static, Assassin, and another Enigma and an yeah. Ash. One thing uh, I was thinking is we could almost okay. overwrite this bottom Enigma with like a Turing because that at least has five strength. Not sure that that's we, that helpful. Uh, we could. We could. I like the draw first just to see if we get an agenda or something uh, or a okay. campaign. All right. So we can, I think we put that and maybe put the breaker bay in there as well. It might deter, yeah. it deter it runs like against it or something. Yeah. yeah. And even if it doesn't, we'll have our discount on resing the ash. Mm -hmm. Which is always a nice detail of that card. Not only does it discount your campaigns, you get to res Caprice and ash and sometimes CVS for free. So he's still just not interested. Yeah. I mean, we're not really on fair. threatening game point yet, so it's sort of reasonable uh, we're just our r d is enigma architect so it's a little bit fragile once he starts running with this rdi it's not going to yeah. be that taxing quite like an ichi to put on there i would think yep okay. and there's no point to get it you're not going to spend a buy ally to get a token here um no i think we'll just score that So we're at four points, so ostensibly, you know, we could be threatening match point at some stage if we drew a food. Uh, we can at least force a bit of urgency. So now the rig is here. Yeah, here we yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Now, now we're, we're in uh, some trouble. Um, I, th I mean, we have to res the ice here. We're just pretty sad I think about we'll it. Res it. Yeah. It's yeah, it's, a, it it's funny how different four credits. Are. Yeah. It's a very different world of ice strength. It like, is, yeah. Yeah, ice is, once the cake gets set up, your ice definitely feels just not very good. Yeah. 
Um, I think what ice we have is still good though. I mean, Ichi yeah. is the main thing. And that's and not a Ibuki bad outcome also, for us. Yeah, it's a rough one to steal. Oh, and there ah, is even an Ichi on top, the so we can just throw that speak right. Speak of the devil. Yeah, we'll just throw yes, that right I think in our that wants to go there. So what else do we do? Play the hedge fund, and then do we want to do anything else? I don't think we do really. At some point, we need to plan to turn. We need to spend the turn drawing, but we don't right now because we... there was just three we... cards seen. Wait, yeah. there should have been four One cards stolen. seen. stolen, right? Yeah, four cards were seen. One was stolen. One oh, was drawn yeah. by us. So there's two fresh at the moment. So, so we, we probably don't do anything this turn. And then could... the next turn, we like draw, draw, and then hopefully jam or something. Right? Yeah, that'll that's be... possible. Try and break the the R and D lock a bit. Yeah, because I don't think I don't there's a point that. to rushing forward through the deck right now. I think I'm just gonna hedge, no. take a credit. Hedge. Yeah, we need money. We want our ash to be. At least somewhat decent. Yeah. He is really poor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Was kind of poor. Yeah. No longer. So this is the draw, so and now draw, this should be a new card. Again. And All right. Certainly is. Okay. We take that. We he take may this. well not bother to run it. Yeah. yeah. I think we can be the Turing. Yeah. So you may feel, yeah, just feel like can't go contesting stuff like this, which is fair enough. Yeah. No. So. There's... He yeah. may just think it's Caprice and Ash yeah. and just not bother with it. So that's nice. It's also nice how this Eve campaign sat there the whole time. Yeah. Man, this uh, prepaid Kate would have loved to have played with Anakam. Yeah. Yeah, it just shows you how much stronger stuff is uh, now. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't I mean, know whether Lucky's... Turing was the right discard there. Do you think Architect was maybe oh, yeah. less useful to us with the I, Mimic? I think you're right. I think Turing was better there. Um, Turing, we could still implement your plan of putting it on the remote and yeah. taxing Gordian a fair bit That's or it. making him find David. Yeah, lucky find. We're now, hard. We're laundering the bin, so do they think we put something in there? Yeah, or I think just. Not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder why that wasn't on each. Not sure what that was instead of uh, HQ here. Yeah. Oh, there we go. All right. So the Ichi is quite a good res. We'll force the admin to come out. Yeah. Uh, so this is four accesses. Yeah. Oh, memory. Oh, SMC. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he basically has a good solution to almost every ice we can throw up, except. Yeah, I don't think the Turing on the bin yet. Remote. Um, so like potentially... Oh, Assassin. Yeah, the Assassin yeah, so is I still alive as well. This might be Cable not knowing the deck 100% of the like, oh, before you install the Otman, you should use SMC to get the David um, so that you have everything available, but... Possibly, uh, yeah. So there are four agendas in here. Yeah. Um, definitely a uh, fine, yeah, so four agendas. No, actually there's... Oh, yeah, we didn't install an agenda on the remote. Four. Yeah. yeah. This is. You mind scrolling down oh, on the log just so just, we can yep. keep up with. Two, three. So I missed, which is unlucky. Yeah, Very for unlucky. sure. So, um, we are probably gonna. Install. So our ice on the remote is assassin, wall of static, and another enigma. Yeah. So technically, mm. there's probably. Oh yeah, with actually nine credits and technical writer, there's a way to get in, but not to beat the ash trace. Right. Yeah. I think well, it's so probably 10, worth trying. Thirteen, think. yeah. Assassin is really our only good piece of ice. What's in the bin? So there's no David in there's the bin. There's no David in right? the bin. Yeah, this is. So he has to break it with his face, just beating the traces, pretty much. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think I don't mind trying it. I think there's a good chance it'll be stolen, but let's make him. Let's pressure. Yeah. And sort of say, you know, you've got to come into this remote now. Yeah. If our ash gets trashed, we have a spare to put in there. Yep. Which is nice. A draw immediately is a bit surprising. 17 credits. It's going to be. Wow, just trying it last click like this. Yeah. So let's just think if we imagine we res the ash for free with Breaker Bay, do we have enough money just to trace him out without caring about resing ice at all? So uh, we would need so a trace. 18 to keep him out 
Well, it and starts then we off need three credits to go and score, right? I think we're credit perfect, aren't we? We pay it's trace four. We put fourteen in to make it eighteen. Keeps him out. That uh, leaves us three credits to score yep, the food. Is that does. right? Yeah, we res it for free, so that's that's perfect. <laughs> it's a bit lucky. Yeah. I mean, of course, we totally planned it this way, audience. Yeah, that is a bit lucky that it works out. So we need credit to put 14 perfect. in. 14, yeah. Wow, that's, a, that's quite wow. tight. <laughs> that, that was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe resing the assassin would have done it as well if we went there, yeah. I'm not sure. Wow, that's... Yeah. GG. GG. Well, that's kind of cool. Looks like he had a slow draw. It does look like he had a slow kind of draw. Unlucky. And also, you know, nice. like... Yeah, it looks like we were maybe like two. Like, if we hadn't drawn the, that GFI, we were probably never gonna uh, see another agenda before he did, potentially. Quite possibly, yeah. It would have been hard. I mean, we'd have had to put like the assassin on R and D and yeah. just try and maybe the Ash. Even I don't know how often you do that, but yeah, yeah it would have been tough. For, it would have been quite tough. This deck can remote lock. You will. Yeah. And we had such a nice draw. I know. <laughs> Ours was going so well. It was it was beauty. Yeah. I wonder actually if he could have played one of those quality times there. Because with two on Tech Rider, he could bounce. Well, we got a decent draw uh, here. It's okay. This is interesting. Yeah, it's okay. We've got Jackson, so we can always get ourselves out of a fix, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe we're okay. Gonna I think we're going to be using we're going to be using uh, Mr. Howard. Yeah, so I think just install them. Um... Install, use, and then see what we have. So, hmm. so do we ditch them both, or do we ice R and D? And hmm. I mean, I'm sort of just sure. to hedge and drop the GFI, maybe. Yeah, that's an option. That's an option. And then we can reshuffle. At least we're reshuffling two cards. Yeah. Rather than just one, and just hope he doesn't casually pick up the Vitruvius yeah. with laundry or something. Quality time, all right. Ah, uh, well, when there you we have... go. There's yeah, the casual, sense. the casual snipe. <laughs> no. Sees a wall of static. Okay. okay, yeah, this is a more. This is the a kind of start I remember Kate having a little more often. Looks so. a lot better. Yeah. Uh, okay, so okay. now we static R and I can't decide if static R and D was better on R and D. Mm. Yeah, do we are we trying to jam this Vitruvius? Are we trying I to? Go I feel out like the we're eve? not. I think we're probably value eving, right? Okay, so we eve and ice the eve. Do you think, or do we not ice the eve? Well, I guess we could not. So, would you? Do you think you would have tried to value score the Vitruvius here, just like Vitruvius behind a static and go? <sighs> it's difficult, isn't it? Um... Yes. The alternative is draw with Jackson, slam the Eve, and maybe just ditch agendas and yeah. say that we're going to try and just get lots of value first. I'm really not sure. I mean, it's yeah, not that safe to jam a, a Vitruvius. I guess like he's an SMC away from stealing well, it. But right, so SMC for Lady is six credits. Mm -hmm. Which it's is free to break. It's free to break. Yes. But it is like that's almost the entire. Oh, yeah, no, and you don't get any Kate discount there because you have to install the SMC first. That's true. So do you think what Vitruvius behind Static and then Naked Eve is the is the line? Yeah, or maybe it's. I guess Enigma is technically more expensive than Static here with Gordian. Yeah, I, I, either one is is okay. I think. Yeah, let, let, can let's do go the, for the aggressive yeah, play. Do the Enigma, and then play the Eve out. Yeah. I feel like if it were 2015, I'd definitely have a much more definitive idea of whether that's right or not. But yeah, um, well. it's sort of stuck in my precision design yeah. mentality where you just ram everything. So he's chosen not to go for it, which is good. Yeah. So what's the SATCON about? I guess it just like wants to counter Ichi and Assassin a bit better. Yeah. Yeah, the SATCON doesn't make a ton of sense to. I'm wondering why it was in this list. I wish Aku had write up so it, I could think about. So I, I can tell you that it's because of Fastrobiotics and the deck plays Clot, and it oh. allows you to keep the Clot in play. Yeah, 
I actually watched um, at least one or two games from Noah on stream at Worlds, and this was very relevant against Fastro. I think Dan should have killed the Eve campaign here. He's not very rich, but you know we are we're not very rich either without the Eve. I'm I agree with Jackson, Jackson drawing. Here. Yeah, yeah, um, I agree with that. Do we just Ooh, go wow. ABT and Wall of Static? Yeah, we. If he runs it and makes us res them both, we'd be on zero, so we would not be able to score it. Um, uh, no, we'd be on one, and then Eve would give us two because we're ETF. Oh, we're ETF. Yeah, we could try it then. Yeah, let's. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to score one and fire it with Jackson in play because yeah, there's certainly a lot of ice left in R and D. A little bit risky, I think. He could certainly steal this if he wants to run it, I think. But yeah. may choose to not. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Just snap run. Yeah, It's quite expensive, though. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, maybe he just can't fetch both breakers, actually. It just costs a bit too much. Ah, well, that... that ah, here we go. Interesting. Ooh, all right. Now oh, wants to okay. Kill the... Never mind, Oops. never mind. This, yeah. That was a mistake. That makes a little more sense. So actually, so, he's not going to have a. He should have no. He should have taken the tech right at first. Yeah, but yeah. I guess no. He actually will have enough because of the Kate discount. We're forgetting all of our credit. No, he's he's already installed uh, a lady. He oh, you're a right. Discount. Yeah. So th this should just by one credit, I think. Oh, what, what what's he on actually? Is it Gordian? It is Gordian? He's on Gordian. Yeah. So we're we're yeah. we're away okay. by one credit. Yeah, we uh, escaped there. <laughs> So he says fire, yeah. Now we'll yep. score this and go down to nothing and hopefully get at least one ice off it. Yeah. What do we get? You can't be get toll a toll booth. booth. Just put that Ooh, on server no. two, you think? Either there or R and D, isn't it? But I guess server two is better and we can put something cheap on R and D. Server two maximizes our uh, discount doesn't it yeah are we discarding um, the archived here yeah i think we probably are either that or jackson but i think jackson's better than archived yeah i think the should, this Eve trash should the Eve. probably die here yeah there it goes yeah yeah we were just so poor it's, it's got to be trash i think our next turn is quite humble it's probably just architect r d and take credits probably yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Still the same, I think. We'll, we'll put the breaker bay down next turn, I can say. Yeah, this is the one case where having that archive might have been nice that we could put the breaker bay archived Eve. Like, but that's. Mm, that's a good consideration. Yeah, that's a good. Maybe that would be better. This remote than is definitely not being run. Yeah. Yeah, or well, maybe Jackson was the correct one to throw away with a, a Jackson already in Jackson play. Jackson already on the board, yeah. And there's only one agenda, so we're fine to... Okay, Even the well... agenda would be quite good. This is excellent, yeah. Nice, good. But yeah, no, this is a great turn, because we get to go break or bray, put the Adonis in, and yeah. play a hedge fund. Oh, Man, it's beautiful. ETF. <laughs> what an <laughs> <Yeah>. ID. <laughs> it is. Uh, well, that said, uh, Cable's on a lot of money. Yeah, oh, so, oh, that's good. So do we, I'm trying to think what we do. Do we use Jackson, install Caprice, and then see what we have apart from that? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> that's <laughs> very, very interesting. Awkward. I mean, I'm so, kind of still of the, like, install Caprice and, like, either install the Eve Y or take a credit, and I'm not sure which of those. Is I, like, I think, yeah, I think credit is better just in case he does choose to run HQ. Yeah, yeah. In case there's a leg work, it's like goes from. Mm. And I think if he doesn't steal the food, we probably just ram it next turn. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. We'll have we'll have made six credits very... off of Adonis. So. Yeah, it's a very good remote. Perhaps there was an argument for ramming it immediately, even though we weren't threatening to score it, like just to get it out of harm's way. Yeah. We'll see. We'll be punished if it's stolen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess it's what. Yeah, because there's still like what eight credits worth of in, no seven credits worth of installs need to come down. Well, okay, less than seven there's now. One of them. 
Um, he's. I mean, I would have thought at best he gets to play one side game with us to contest this. Oh, remote. I forgot. I I forget that Caprice has text. Oh yeah, yeah. Caprice is is broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have the ash as well, but that's just going to come down on a later turn, I think. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether we could install advance and then install the ash because we have biotic. Okay. Yeah. Just value biotic to secure. Yeah, the ash is to secure ourselves even more for if we actually lose the side game. Yeah. Also, this looks a bit less threatening to him. He might not even run it. Because it looks like it's not threatening the win. Yeah, I mean, I think this yeah. is probably the right play of just, okay, have to pivot. Yeah, I guess this looks it's like NAPD, right? So it, it does sort of. Do we shuffle with Jacko? It, oh well, uh, too late okay. now. <laughs> Not to worry. <laughs> Is there an agenda in the bin? There was actually. There so was shuffling with Jacko. Bin, so. Yeah, shuffling doesn't make sense anyway. Yeah. So there we have it. Biotic win. Food coats. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. It was pretty powerful. That beta test was a bit fortunate, but uh, yeah. I think people often tried to clear Jackson back then a bit more aggressively for that reason. Yeah, I think so. Against the HB, I think it makes some sense. Um, yeah, I think Ooh. Dan's draw did seem, again, a touch awkward, but not atrocious at the same time. It wasn't time. as bad as... Yeah, it wasn't sort of as terrible as the first. Um, I think probably the Kate deck is just harder to pick up as well if you've never ever seen it and you're just coming in. It's harder than yeah. ETF. I mean, yeah, this is just, a glacier, just sort of... a glacier ETF list that mostly plays itself, and I think yeah. the Kate list has some has some intricacies to it. Yeah, but the Kate is, is certainly harder to play, I would, I would say. Um... Thank you for thanks for doing this. Um, do you have any yeah, you know, final final thoughts? Probably not, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, final thoughts. So, I guess Coast was what, a good deck. Yeah, I mean, are there things about this list that you think you'd like to see come back into stand, you know, into future sets or standard Ooh. design kind of stuff? Um. Yeah, loads of these cards have gone. I mean, I always really liked Ash. It was uh, I know why it went because we're sort of phasing out traces, but it, it's like an absolute staple for me. It was there when I started playing, and I've always really liked the card. Uh, Caprice was a very controversial one. I know I never had a problem with it, but a lot of people don't like it, and I we mean, sort of have a replacement for that with yeah. Void anyway. We're like. Uh, I forget, we're like a few months away from rumor mill at this point, I think, right? Which just destroys both of these. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, actually... what was the latest pack? We, I think, we're actually a bit further no, away. Oh yeah, that. we're like a we're like six months away, I think, something like that. Yeah, I think I think after this, food coats became worse because of the um, what was it called? The NAPD list where they they added influence to certain cards in order oh, to include them in your deck. Yes, so yes. I think Eli so like and Architect, Architect both got hit by that and you yeah. had to start running only one Caprice, which was yeah. a problem. Um, and later by the time Rumor Mill... I don't know if Food Coats was much of a deck then anyway, but if it was, Rumor yeah. Mill would really have... Uh, was a massive yeah. sucker punch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would say it was an interesting list. I always enjoyed playing it. There's quite a bit of variation between the lists. So this is one that I, you know, threw together for this. But I know that some people, yeah, if we just hover on it, some people Let's see, see if Dan's is different. It probably will be. So Dan is playing three NAPD and only one Vitruvius. So I think that okay. was a common yeah. choice was you were deciding on the extra tax or whether you wanted more never advance with having more three twos um the it's ice like, suite we've got uh, yeah there's no, uh, there's no assassin oh instead it's using ichi's ichi 2.0 ah, ichi 2 yeah ichi 2 it was an option instead of assassin dan's got the toll booth in there as well yeah um, it's got two archive memories i'm really I, maybe that's just to recur one. some of these a little more easily i'm not sure exactly yeah it, it stands out yeah, a little bit odd to me it. but maybe it's just a nice utility card for a lot of stuff 
or maybe it's a nice utility card. I think one or two. I think one or two was fairly standard. There's no CVS in Dan's list, so I think CVS was kind of an optional. Have we got Hoyland's here? Hoyland's list. No, it, it does have one CVS in it. Oh, sorry, I misread. It has a CVS. Yeah, so I don't know how optional or how. I don't know whether every deck had it. Uh, it looks like Dave it, yeah. does not. So Dave has the other, which was dropping the toll booth and playing two Chrysium. Mm. So that allows to tech a bit for prepaid Kate by whiffing yeah. Maker's Eyes, and it's good against Siphon, obviously. Yeah. Um, so he's probably cut the CVS to make slots. He's only got one Archive Memories. Um, and he has three Assassin. Dave was, <laughs> I, I do remember that, his love of uh, Assassin. So this was back when Assassin was actually a good card, <laughs> which... <laughs> Some people might not remember. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, for giving me some of your time, and thanks to uh, Dan as well for for being our sparring opponent. Um, yeah, thanks, Jeff. Thoroughly enjoyed it. All right. Well, have a nice day. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone.